Yay, yay, there you are. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, it's nice to see you. It's nice to see you too. You got kind of a, oh, there you go, the light's adjusting. You were like in a green <laughs> tint. It looked, like, it looked like on Star Trek when they start to they contact the, the enemy ship, right? And it's like, <laughs> green guy you know <laughs> oh that's weird <laughs> no it looks perfect except you you set your bar your your mic stand is kind of i know i tried to move it i it just, just it doesn't I work out like but you got a professional stand. setup there huh you 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 you've done this before i've never done this before but what? i have the arm it's all set up but uh just never did it you look like you've been podcasting for years with, with i the know mic and the headphones and... <laughs> nice work thanks well, I'm excited to dive in here. And like I said, I'm going to bring on a couple pros. Uh, Chris Orzakowski, that's about all the firepower you need. But um, I'm going to bring other people who you feel might be specially qualified to help. But um, Dean Edelson is here. Just like catch us up uh, and tell us what this ad is about, what your goal is for it, and how we can best help you. Okay. Um, I think that the biggest thing that I was looking at right now is the landing page. Um, I haven't really um, put myself out there a lot as far as um, letting people see me, know me, or um, even putting my personality on anything yet. So what I was basically focused on is the landing page right now, just right. to make sure that it's juicy enough and that um, the target audience would be um, curious enough to um, opt in for the advertorial so all right cool so tell us what what are we selling and to who at the at the end of the day here um at the end of the day this is a monthly newsletter that i would write for them okay um you so would write for them as them as a service they could uh, deliver to their audience or uh, this is your marketing newsletter that you want people to pay for no, it's it would be a newsletter for them to send to their patients to, to get their patients, them. medical expert. Oh, these are dentists, correct? Right. Yeah, that's gotcha. right. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So the avatar is dentist. The service is it's uh, content marketing for dentists, essentially. And you're yes. offering a month a monthly newsletter, and and again, you're selling yourself as much as anything here. And I, I'm thrilled to hear, by the way, that you want to put yourself out there more because. I'm um, I'm really enjoying talking to you, and would love to. I think your your presence is going to resonate well with people. Good. So it's it's and you get the camera going, and all, as soon as we move that over, you're going to be fine. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, cool. I need um, one that's on the desk instead of the arm. It's all good. Um, yeah. All right, so I'm going to bring Chris back on, and uh, Chris pulls no punches. So, uh, and I know you want that because I always say the the moment we become a real a true writer is when we crave the harsh critique. Um, and I'm going to also bring, um, who else could, um, would Carrie Carr want to come on or would uh, Rachel want to come back? Let's see if Rachel, Rachel tap into your alter ego again. I'm going to really put you, um, are you cool to come back, Rachel? Um, cool. All right. Let's bring Rachel back. And, um, uh, does anybody uh, have any particular experience with this market, with dentists, with marketing to dentists or other medical professionals of any kind? Let me know if you do, and um, uh, and then we can have you come on. All right, so now, uh, Veronica, say hi to Chris and Rachel. Hi, Chris. Hi, Rachel. What's Hello. Up? All right, and so let me uh, share what we're looking at here. And this is a postcard, Veronica? This is a postcard. I have a, probably a thousand of them in right now. That a thousand of this exact out. postcard it, ready That's to, right. you're, you're going to lick stamps and send these things out yourself. They've already been licked. They're already done. All right. They're ready to go. <laughs> they're ready to go. Yes. <laughs> Licking, check that box. All right. Great. All right. So let's see. This is, so guys, this is coming to us where the, where the, where dentists in the office and it says question. Uh, how can you add an additional 25 plus patient visits next month? And this is the back of it, um, Veronica? Yes. Okay. So either side that it lands on, that's what both sides look like. Great. By my calculations, you've got around 775 things that you already do to run your dental practice each month. Let us handle your patient newsletters. Email or print patient newsletters can generate additional 25 plus patient visits every month. Let us do the writing and technology setup for you. Okay. 
getpatientvisits.com. And then uh, this, this will appear where? This is the landing page copy. Okay, gotcha. So then when I go here, we go to, we, we got offline, go online, and then we get a free white paper reveals how writing one email newsletter drives 20 to 50 additional patient visits month for this local doctor. Will you be the last person to see that your current uh, email newsletter just ain't working? Uh, we sent that. Okay, cool. Oh, this is um, Dr. Ben. That's um, Ben Adkins. Yes. Um, I bought it from him. Oh, so, so this is a, a product that he licensed and that you now can go out and market for as your own. Yes. I see. And does he, I assume what comes with that is some, is this his uh, protocol for how to, does he recommend sending out postcards to sell this to dentists or is that? Yes, that's part of the things that he um, included with it. Okay. Yes. And same with this template, is this tested and proven by him or is this all of your doing? Nope, that's him. Okay, so we're looking at a product, a packaged marketing product that was uh, that you purchased that you are now going to use to create clients. And have you, yes. um, so nothing has gone out, this is untested for you as of yet, Veronica? Um, no, I um, took his initial advice, which was to go into the offices, talk in person to the receptionists and um, hand out donuts and uh, brochure and all of those things and then come back and um, sell them on it. That did not go over very well. Yeah, this brother, you're making it easy on them, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So step one, pull, oh, pull under Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> step two, <Yeah. laughs> disrupt people at work. Step three, <laughs> Get them to commit to something they don't understand. Step four. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not picking on Ben. I don't know Dr. Ben Adkins. I know he's respected in some circles, so I'm just going to look at this objectively. But let's pretend we don't know or care about any of that, Chris. As a marketing plan, what are you seeing here? So let me just make sure I understand. So you're going to send these postcards to these people. They're going to go to the site, and your goal is to get them to opt in, right? That is my goal so that I can at least get interest. That's what I was thinking okay. that I would generate interest that way instead of interrupting people at work, like he said. Yeah. And then what is, so like after someone opts in, then what happens? Then they would receive the free advertorial. They don't, I don't call it that, but um, they would receive the free advertorial plus a sample of what it would look like going into people's email inboxes. And then I would just um, have a short follow-up sequence, um, still tr following up with them. Um, but in the advertorial is my phone number for them to call as well. So okay. that's uh, their other option is to gotcha. call me. Gotcha. So gotcha. is there any email follow-up to this? Um, to the like once they opt in, do they go through like an autoresponder or like okay yes i set up an autoresponder gotcha uh and what is your offer like how do you you just you basically just work you you write the, you write one version of it essentially and then just license it out to all these people and so you go into their email and like send it out and push all the buttons and stuff yes okay now do these people have these dentists do they have lists already, like email lists? They should. If okay. they don't, then I would um, help them get those people to opt in. And how okay. could they have accumulated that list? Through other marketing efforts or from like former patients or? Um, when a patient comes into the office, they fill out a form and on that form is a spot for their email address. And so we would just collect it that way. Okay. But they still haven't opted in, so I would still, you know, um, yeah. get them to opt in. So, but yeah. they have consented, I think, by adding their email address. Gotcha. Okay. So here's here's what I would do. Um, you, you so you have the case study essentially. That's what the opt in bribe is right now, right? Yes. Or it's one half of it essentially, because the other half is the free newsletter, right? Yes. If well, I were you, I would take that entire case study and that would be the page itself. Um, and the reason why is because they don't know you. They got something in the mail. 
I think if it was maybe, and I could be wrong, I don't know, but like, I think it was maybe 15, 20 years ago when people were like starving for information, <laughs> then yeah, you could just, oh yeah, I'll sign up for this thing and I'll put my email address in here. But I think nowadays they, these people probably get bombarded with this stuff. Um, so if you kind of take the whole, yeah, like I'm, and this is definitely uh, a riff off Dean Jackson's idea where he basically in his, uh, when he does ads in success magazine, he makes that the most valuable page in the entire magazine. It's an ad, but it like literally teaches you like, Hey, send this nine word email and you'll make money. So then after people try that, they're like, Holy shit, this guy knows his stuff. And now I'm definitely going to opt in. I think if people want to, you know, like, I think if they read that case study, you know, it, it, you're, you're asking them to take a big, like, leap of faith to put their email in because they're like, I don't know who this person is. They sent me this postcard. I've never heard of them. They're probably going to bombard me with marketing messages. But if you kind of lead with that, you know, the whole page is just this one big ass case study. And you're like, here's the doctor. Here's the town he was in. Here's the problem. Here's what we did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All the things we did. Here was the result. Here's what the patient said. And it's just like this crazy, awesome case study. The people who get to the bottom of that and are nodding along the whole time, they're going to be like, wow, this is incredible. Like, how do I get this person to do this for me? And then, oh, there's the opt-in. And, oh, holy crap, they're going to give me a free news. They're going to give me, you know, one or two or even three free issues of the thing so I can even take it and send it myself. At that point, you're kind of front-loading with so much value. The thing is, like, these people, they are never, ever going to actually go in and go into their email address and do it themselves. This is a job that right. often gets pushed on to – the receptionist right. or the the back, the front office person at their uh, at at the the dentist office like there's absolutely no way in hell this dentist is ever going to fire up their laptop and be like I'm going to send some emails out like it's just never <laughs> going to happen so you could you could give them a, a year's worth of, of of issues or back issues or whatever right. they're not going to go and create a new one and they sure as hell aren't going to go in and push the buttons and do it themselves so if right. that's the value proposition if that's what you're selling then yeah you can give like I I found this in my own copywriting business. Like I would give these free trainings to like certain like business groups and I would spend an hour and a half, like, Oh, here's how you do an autoresponder. And here's what to put in email one. Here's an example. And here's the, the template. And then here's email two. And I would do that for like a 10 email autoresponder. And every single time people would be like, wow, it sounds like you really know what you're talking about. Can I just give you money to do this for me? So I know that that's like a desire that people have. They're like, wow. Okay. You clearly know what you're talking about. I think that's the way to go about this just because you have so much, of like a, a trust bridge that you need to build between yeah. people who've literally never heard of you and they find something in the mail. Um, so that's what I would probably do. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, does that make sense, Veronica? Yes, that makes sense. And actually um, that's what Ben said to do is to just put it on a page and not do the opt-in part. I just wanted the opt-in part so that I could follow up and know who read it. You could also put a retargeting pixel on that page as well. Um, so that's another way and you could just retarget with another lead magnet. So you do have options there. Um, but yeah, I, I totally get that. And you will get opt-ins, but like really you, the only opt-ins you want are the people who've read that case study and people who have seen the power of what you do. Right. So yes. if you know, you don't want a list of people who you roped them into giving, not that you're trying to rope them into giving them their email address, but essentially that's kind of what they think. Right. You, those are, those are, if they're never going to read your stuff and they just opt in and get the thing and unsubscribe or use a burner email address, whatever, like they're never going to turn into money anyway. Right. We want the people who see, and this is why, I mean, this is Kev, why I do so much freaking content because by the time people want to, you know, by the time people are ready to give me money, they've consumed my emails. They've read all my articles. They've heard me on podcasts. They've done, they've seen me on video, they've seen me on cheap chats. Right. So it's the same, literally the same idea just applied in different industry. Like the more of that value you can front load, I think it's just going to be huge. Yeah, I, I think a, a ton of proof is needed here. And one, one thing I'm not seeing, um, even when I get to the this part, the white paper, it's like, Dr. Ben, but but why? Like, who's my trusted authority here um, on why these work, right? Like, you know, so I don't, I don't know if that's a factor or what, but um, I, I feel like this is a, a lot of friction. You know, Veronica, I always think about, you know, how can we re remove all the friction from somebody saying yes, or please tell me more. Or, wow, this is exciting. You know, what is the dream come true for this avatar? And having, reading a white paper that explains to them how sending a newsletter might bring more patients is, is not the dream come true. The dream come true is how would you like to do nothing and add... <laughs> 25 uh, new patients a month to your 
Um, and so um, I, I think the, you know, proof is going to be essential here. And, and really, you know, they have to feel like, okay, what, what are other people doing that we're not doing? I'm sure it's like very competitive and they're aware of like when they go to conferences or they see the dentist around the corner is they hear, oh, they're always booked, you know? And like they would, they know secretly their whole staff wishes they worked for that dentist. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, you know, like put, you need to yeah. like prick all those insecurities and go, you're, you're, you know, dentists who uh, don't even have as good a reputation of, of you and don't care for their patients on the same level as you are overbooked and you're sitting here with holes in your calendar. What, what's, what's the problem here? What do they know that you don't? And, uh, and, and then, you know, so you got to either get their ego to sit up and read, or it's got to be some kind of fix a bigger problem than just sure. It'd be nice to have more patience, but the way this is right now, to be honest, it, it feels like it. And again, I, I know it, it's what was provided to you, but I would, my critique is that it feels like it's very obviously it's, it's cheese and not it's whiskers and not cheese. It feels like it's the goal of it is to get you signed up at, get them signed up as your client so you can make money and hopefully this system will actually work. It doesn't feel like, let me, let me let you, I want to let you in on a secret that may change your life and solve your immediate problem of not having enough patience. And if we can get it to that level. And, and again, like, I just don't know how new uh, this is or how, uh, you know, what the proof is that this, is still working as a marketing vehicle. Um, uh, you know, a white paper, uh, an email newsletter. I mean, let's be honest. When's the last time you saw a, a newsletter from your dentist and you going, sorry, honey, we can't go to dinner because I just got a, the newsletter from Dr. <laughs> Yekowitz and I got to I got to read this. You know what I'm saying? So I don't I, I don't want to bum you out. I just want to say um, we got to question all the objections that they might have around. Will this work for them? It's got to feel fresh and new. And, you know, uh, if they're not reading newsletters, but they are spending all day on Facebook, like maybe there's other channels or ways to incorporate what people are actually doing to make this feel fresh and new and current and like a breakthrough that they want to be a part of. Um, that'd be my thought. Okay, Rachel, sorry, we, we yammered on and, and hopefully left you some, some fresh ideas. So what are you seeing? Yeah, sure. So I kind of look at it through two lenses, through the copy lens, but then also through the graphic design lens. And when I see that postcard, it, it doesn't really break down the process for me. And I think that that's something that would really help if it was broken down for the prospect where he can say, okay, this is what I have to give them this is what they give me, these are the results. It could even just be three things, but from a visual standpoint, that would send the message very clearly, like this would be easy for me and look at all of the wonderful ways I would benefit from that. And then leading into the white paper or the case study, as Chris said, if you choose to use that route, just make it very, very step-by-step. You know, like when we, when we are closing a letter, we don't just say order now, we say, order now, pick up your phone, call this number, talk to this person, say this, like you have to make it very, very explicit. So I think that just kind of making your message more step-by-step and explicit so that the the dentist will understand, oh my gosh, this is an opportunity that I absolutely have to take. It's going to be really helpful and look at all these steps. It's really going to be easy for me. Mm. Yeah. Great, great point, Rachel. Yeah, really good. And Veronica, there's some, and by the way, after this, when we post the replay, we'll um, uh, post up all the comments here because a lot of great stuff in the comments. You may have been reading along, but some people, uh, Darren's father was a dentist for 60 years. And you know what I'm seeing a lot of in the theme here is they want that higher end um, patient, you know? Yes. And um, has that been discussed in this, in what Dr. Ben teaches and... Tell me more about like, is, are there other options? Is this just one postcard? Are there other marketing angles? W- what is involved in this? Um, that would probably be the only marketing angle. The only other thing that I'm thinking is that, um, you know, just to even 
get them to feel like they know me without me having to do all of that legwork of walking into office after office after office when they're busy, like you yeah. said, they're working. Yeah, that's no fun at all. Yeah. And, um, you know, just finding out if I can even get them to um, interact with me online or something like that, which has been very difficult. Um, a yeah. lot of those groups that are for dentists, they're closed groups, and you'd literally have to create your own group from scratch. And um, yeah. I you was know, just find a way to even just get a conversation started. With or you'd that. have to go to dental school, which might that take a few years to, you know. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That's not happening. How so. did you become a dentist? I wanted to market. <laughs> right. I wanted to feel qualified. Hey, um, no. Yeah, you know, um, let me ask you, that I'm just going to take a, a step to the left here, Veronica, and say, what 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 is it you want from your career? Do you consider your... You're not a freelance marketer or something. You, you, what, what do you want to have happen as a result of this personally? Um, you know, I basically just want to be able to work from home and not have to fight with traffic and all that extra stuff that comes along with leaving home to work. So um, I basically just wanted to have my own book of clients that I could serve and, um, you know, help them to grow as needed people who are already started people who already have something and yep, um gotcha. you know I something mean, the, that i can actually do <laughs> yeah and look the, the reason i don't i'm not i don't want to be discouraging about this it's just that we you know we 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 this is a critique and we see what we say because we care and we want things to be easier for you um and i want to be able to offer what ifs um you know what if you tried this what if you tried that but the reality is I feel like that would be a little ahead of what we're talking about because you're just looking to get this, get any reaction to this, right? Now, here, here's the, this may or may not work out this particular product for this market, in the, in the, but here's the good thing about it. If you talk to anybody who's successful as a in direct response, they all have that first product story, that first thing they heard about or tried, something that got us interested and educated that this whole world even exists. And so your inspiration to want to do this is valid, is genuine, and, and, and is the first step of finding out what it's going to end up looking like. It's, we know that it'll be different. Even if this was successful, within six months or a year, you'd be on to something different. And so really all you want to do is get some savvy and have people react in a way that encourages you that, okay, I did find a thing or I'm close to finding a thing that's actually going to help me you know, reach this goal of, of, of getting out of traffic and not having to clock in to get paid, right? So yes. I applaud that effort and I don't want to uh, discourage it in any way because, you know, people, people find their way into this world all kinds of ways and, and this was yours. And I, uh, but I, and so it's more important to me that you don't think oh, I tried that work from home thing and I tried to market to Dennis and nobody would talk to me. And so I guess that doesn't work. This works in all kinds of cool ways. It just might not be through this particular method, but uh, hang out on copy chief and see like, ask other people, how did you get, you know, started? Maybe, you know, copywriting, you know, for you might be the thing there's, you know, go through the money skills, like go through Chris's email course and, um, uh, you know, the training of the Facebook training or Rachel Maz's advertorial training and say like, what resonates with you? What do you enjoy writing? And, and you could hang out a freelance shingle, all kinds of ways that you could um, do this and feel like you have control over it. But so again, I, I, I'm trying to be careful not to be discouraging, but I also don't want you to be so frustrated by, by this first endeavor that, that you give up. Thank you. Um, I think that the biggest thing for me was um, I didn't feel like I had enough experience doing this job in particular for anyone, yeah. even though I've done it for people and it was like on a small scale, um, just per people that I knew personally um, who are small business owners, but um, I feel like I didn't do it for long enough and I really wanted to do more. Um, yeah. And it's just, um, I feel like I'm making a transition again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. Well, let's, you know, stay in dialogue about if not this, then then what? And, and like you have a whole community here of people who would love to help you and, and help you figure it out. It's not always an overnight thing. 
sometimes you got to think through a bunch of different stuff. But, you know, like I said, your, your, your reasons are completely valid and the opportunities are definitely out there. So I can't wait till we're having a conversation about what is working and how we can improve it. Let, let's make sure we help get you there. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Thank can you. I just add one thing? Please. Go ahead. Veronica, I smiled when you said that because I'm in such a similar state right now. And I've been having a lot of conversations with Andy Coley about, you know, feeling like an expert, feeling like I can just go out and do this. And uh, she actually just joking around, she just anointed me an expert. You know, I'm sure she's done that to other people. It's just, we're an expert. There, it's done. <laughs> just get over there. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're looking for a little bit of inspiration, uh, maybe reach out to her. She's pretty awesome for just, yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah, real yeah. and yeah helps us get past ourselves for sure for sure all right veronica thank you uh for doing this and again if there's something here we'll find it if there's some something somewhere else we'd love to help you know you find that too so Absolutely. we're here for you and, and and we'll get there together okay great thank you it was great meeting you thank you so much thank rachel and, and chris really appreciate you guys thanks. this was a fun one thanks everybody for tuning in and hanging out We'll see you on the next one. And don't forget, both the podcast uh, starts Monday, but we're going to sneak it in today. So uh, get going on that, and I'll see you guys there. Bye, everybody.